good afternoon uh, am i audible Ankika, are you there? Uh, we'll wait for a few minutes. Uh, there is some technical issues. So please give us five minutes, two to three minutes actually. Am I audible now?
Monkey kah? Yes sir. Am I audible? Yeah yeah. You're audible now. Can you hear me? Yes sir. I can hear you. Uh, okay, I think I should sure. start the. Okay. Yeah, you can start the session. Okay sir. Good afternoon and warm greetings to everyone. Respected speaker of today's session, Mr. Devashish Dutta sir. Faculty members. I, on behalf of the Gorgon College family, welcome you all to today's session of the week-long international workshop on intellectual property rights for the protection and promotion of innovations. Organized by IQAC Gorgon College in collaboration with DPIIT IPR Chair, Tejpo University, and IPEG, the City Law School, City University of London. It is indeed a privilege to welcome Mr. Devashis Dutta sir here with us today. Sir currently works as scientist B of Patent Information Center, which functions under the Science and Technology Division of Assam, Science, Technology and Environment Council. His primary job responsibilities include IPR consultation, patent searches, etc. He has actively participated as a resource person in various workshops, seminars, IPR camps, etc., along with other science and technology related works of the council. We welcome you, sir. And uh, without much ado, I would uh, hand over the session to you. And I would request our participants to stay connected with us. Thank you. Am I audible? So you are audible. Uh, is my screen visible to all? Uh, yes, it is visible. I think you can slide, put it on slideshow. <clears throat> I think it is full screen now. Yes. <clears throat> uh, so thank you very much. Uh, good afternoon, all. Uh, I welcome you all to this session on introduction to intellectual property rights. First of all, I would like to thank the organizers for giving me this opportunity to interact with you all today. <clears throat> intellectual property rights has become a indispensable area of our life. In today's world, it cut across all dimensions. Uh, be it literature, academics, research and development, science and technology, films, cinematography, in all fields, intellectual property rights is associated with all these fields. So therefore, it is very important to uh, have a basic knowledge about intellectual property rights, or shortly IPR. <clears throat> in this regard, the organization of this workshop on international basis is very uh, timely step. And I <clears throat> congratulate the Gogar College for taking this initiative to organize this workshop. I hope uh, this workshop will uh, benefit the participants uh, to a huge amount. In this session, uh, we will have a basic idea about intellectual property rights. Uh, we will discuss about all the topics like intell uh, under intellectual property rights, like patent, copyright, trademark, and all these things. We will discuss the basic details of all these um, different kinds of IPR. So uh, first of all, what do we understand by the word property? Uh, property is a tangible or an intangible entity, which is usually owned by a person or by a group of person or a legal body. Where there is some law to define the property rights, property rights can exist in such places. <clears throat> the bundle of rights of a person or a um, group of persons over an entity give him the ownership of the entity. For example, when we buy a plot of land, we prepare some documents like Samabandi land holding certificate, etc. Only then we have the uh, right to build a house, house there, or maybe 
we have the uh, right to cultivate there or we can uh, give the plot of land on rent to someone somebody else similar is the case with a car say we have bought a car and we uh, we have done all the documents then only we can take the car to the uh, uh, to the road and if somebody wants to use our car uh, car then he has to take permission from us so the control exercised by the person over the entity makes the entity a property of that person so it is the control which we exercise on our um, entities that makes it makes it a property of ours Uh, usually, there are some principles which are attributed to the existence of property rights. It includes the control of use of the property, the right to transfer or sell the property, the right to any economic or any other benefit from the property, and the right to exclude others from the property. But these are some principles which are uh, attributed to the existence of our property rights. But uh, when we buy a property, efforts are very necessary if you want to buy a uh, car then we have to save money we have to pay the emi similarly uh, we if we buy if you want to pay uh, buy a house then we have to look uh, we have to search for the uh, uh, property which suits our needs so it takes a lot of effort to create a property similarly the creations of human mind like inventions design songs novels logos and symbols all these kinds of creations they are also involved with human ingenuity creativeness and intellectual effort so that is why they are also kind they are also considered as a kind of property which is known as intellectual property please mind it it is intellectual property so these properties these products which are uh, created out of a person's brain, they may be as valuable as, as his plot of land or his goods. So intellectual property refers to the creations of human mind. So such creations include inventions, symbols, names, images used in commerce, designs, literary and artistic works. So all these are our creations of human mind and these are all known as intellectual property. Then what is intellectual property rights? Legal protection for such creations of human mind is provided through a different form of property rights under the law. And it is known as intellectual property rights or shortly IPR. Such rights include right to use the owner's IP, right to any benefit from the IP, right to license the intellectual property, right to transfer or sell it, and most importantly, right to exclude others from the IP. So these are all our intellectual property rights. It allows the owner to exercise monopoly on the use of the IP for a specified period of time. I will come to this point uh, later. So uh, now we have the uh, right to exercise our monopoly on the use of the IP. Defined forms of IPR include patent, copyright, trademark, industrial design, geographical indications, semiconductor integrated circuit layout design, land variety protection, and farmer's rights. So total there are seven kinds of IPR. So we will discuss one by one all of them. Uh, but before going into that, we need to know what is the need of IP protection uh, in the uh, in a society. Protection of IP uh, is very crucial for the growth of a society. If we uh, uh, made the new knowledge freely available to everyone, so everybody will copy it, everybody will use it without any kind of uh, providing in any in providing without providing any kind of incentive to the person who has created the knowledge. So uh, ultimately, the person who has created the new knowledge, he will be disappointed and he will not be motivated to create any more further new knowledge. So ultimately, it will lead to the non-generation of any new knowledge. So as a result, our growth of the society will be hampered. 
So it is very important to develop a legal system which can uh, uh, provide the people the opportunity to share their knowledge with return benefit. It will motivate them to uh, create more new knowledge so that it can benefit the maximum people. So that is the need of IP protection in our society. So what are the benefits associated with our protection of intellectual property? First of all, it provides the legal recognition and reward which is received by the creator for his creative efforts, leading to the social recognition and reputation. Uh, for example, when we uh, own a patent, our name comes on the newspaper, everybody comes to know uh, about it and everybody appreciates our effort. So it is the legal recognition and it is the social recognition and reputation that we get from the intellectual property rights. Secondly, the owner has the exclusive monopoly right over the intellectual property. So anybody who wants to use his product or process, he need to take permission from the owner. So only the, uh, use, uh, only the owner can uh, have the exclusive right over the intellectual property. When we promote and protect our intellectual property, it leads to economic growth. Uh, we can, uh, we know different kinds of uh, economic activities like technology transfer, like trademark, um, like the uh, ownership of a company by another one. So these are all lead to economic growth. And it creates a conducive atmosphere for the growth of industries and employment. For example, if we, uh, if we have a uh, patent and we want to uh, develop the industry to put the patent into use, in, that, in this case, the, that will lead to the generation of a lot of employment opportunities to the people. And finally, uh, since new knowledge is created, it leads to the progress of the quality and the prosperity of our life. And it is very much important for the well-being of our society. So these are the benefits of uh, IP protection. So now we will discuss the uh, different intellectual property acts one by one. First of all, we come to uh, the patent. Before going into the details of patent, we need to uh, understand a few terms which we use in our daily life. <clears throat> First of all, discovery. So what is discovery? Actually, it is the uh, process of finding an information, a place or an object for the first time. Uh, everybody knows the famous dialogue that uh, Columbus discovered America. Col uh, America already existed, but uh, it was only Columbus who actually uh, introduced the place to the rest of the world. So uh, it is the process of uh, <clears throat> make the people knowing of uh, anything which is already existing. Then what is invention? Invention is a product or maybe a process that provides a new way of doing something or that offers a new technical solution to a problem. To find a solution to a technical problem which is existing, uh, a certain adequate amount of human ingenuity, creativeness, and inventiveness must be involved with it. For example, when Thomas Alva Edison invented electric bulb, we all know how much hard work he has to put into the uh, in, into his initiative. So uh, after a uh, large number of failures, he ultimately was able to invent the electric light bulb. So it is a perfect example of invention. So what is innovation? Innovation actually refers to the translation of the invention into a marketable product or process. Actually, these are some creative ideas or means which can provide us uh, with economic benefit. For example, there was, uh, we, in earlier days, there was one uh, basic version of MP3 player, but later Apple company came up with an, another innovation, which is known as in iPod. Uh, it was very beautiful and the use was very easy and it has a graceful ergonomics. As a result, uh, it became a huge um, 
success in the market. But the basic uh, component under the iPod was actually the MPT player. So it is a perfect example of innovation. Now we come to patent. So patent is an exclusive right granted by the government to the inventor for an invention of a product or a process, and it is provided for a limited period of time. It provides the owner, uh, which is known as the patent, the exclusive right to prevent others from making, using, selling, importing his patented product or process without taking his prior permission. Only the patent can make, use, sell, or import the product, or he can uh, license, provide license to others to make or sell it. In return of the exclusive right provided by the patent, uh, the applicant, he has, to, uh, he has to disclose his invention by providing a detailed, accurate, or complete written description of the invention in the patent application. So uh, one, can, one applicant, patent applicant, cannot hide his uh, uh, description of his invention. He has to inform it in details to the patent office. And in return, the uh, patent office provides him with the exclusive right to uh, prevent others from using his product or selling his product. So uh, that may be a product or a process. And that is given for a period of 20 years from the date of filing of the patent application. So period of patent is 20 years. Uh, the important aspect is that patent is a territorial right. That means uh, if I have filed a patent in India and it is registered and grant or granted in India, then my rights are, are limited within the uh, boundary of our country. It is not enforceable in some other country, say in Europe or in America. So any person who is residing, who is residing in those countries where the patent has not been filed or has not been granted, he can exploit the patent for his commercial benefit without any kind of rich, uh, restrictions. So, but he cannot uh, export, uh, export the product to the country where it is already patented. So if my uh, patent is uh, granted in India and my product is being uh, sold in India, in the market of India, if a person uh, residing in America wants to uh, make or sell my product, he can do it, but he cannot. Uh, uh, he cannot export the product to my country, that is India. If I want to have protection in other countries, I can also apply to that within, uh, to that country. Uh, after a long, after a period of time, since uh, let I have uh, come to know that say I am uh, come to know that uh, the American market is uh, very. Uh, maybe have good protect, uh, good scope for my uh, patent, uh, patented product. So in that kind of case, I can uh, apply to that country. Uh, in that case, uh, I can uh, use the patent cooperation treaty. <clears throat> if I want to apply in multiple countries at one go, then I can file it through patent cooperation treaty. It is a treaty uh, signed between uh, almost uh, 140 countries through which a person can file in multiple countries. So uh, he doesn't go to the prior some process of uh, filing in each and every country one by one or filing uh, and paying the fees in every country. So the uh, effort and amount of money required to file an international patent is reduced through the patent cooperation treaty. To grant the patent, there are some basic criteria. These three criteria are novelty, inventiveness, and industrial applicability. Novelty is that uh, the invention must be a new one, and it should not be published anywhere in the past. That means it should not be anticipated by prior knowledge in public domain. Say I have a product and the description of, about it is already available in the public domain. Then it has already lost its novelty. 
in many cases, uh, we see that when a person or a local inventor uh, develops a product, he immediately uploads the description of his product in the YouTube or in social media. In such cases, it is like he has already uh, uh, destroyed the novelty of his product himself. So when we develop a new product or a new process, first of all, we should go for the patent filing. After all, after only after that, we should uh, go for uh, disclosing the product or the process in the public domain. Second criteria is the inventiveness. An inventive snail is usually considered as a feature of an invention, which is involved with a technical advance as compared to the existing knowledge or having economic significance or both. It makes the invention non-obvious to a person's skill in the art. Uh, for example, if a person is uh, developing a product in the automobile sector and somebody from a local garage says that it is very easy and uh, I can also develop this product. It is just adding this uh, and joining this to this. Then it is like the mechanic who is working in the garage, who is already skilled in the art. So he, it is easily deducible to him. So there is no technical advance as compared to the existing knowledge. So there must be an inventive step involved with the product or the process. Thirdly, the invention must be capable of being made or used in an industry. So it is known as industrial applicable. So any product or a process which aspires to be granted by the patent office, it has to go through these three filters, novelty, inventiveness, and industrial applicability. But it doesn't mean that uh, a small product or a small process cannot be granted patent. I have given the example of safety pin below. It is a very small product, but it was one of the earliest patent. It was patented by Walter Hahn. So what is the uh, inventiveness involved in this safety pin? So as you can see, there is a, uh, the use of the painted uh, safety pin is that to stitch uh, a piece of cloth together or something else together. So first of all, it has a pointed, uh, uh, a pointed end to pierce through the cloth. Secondly, uh, to ensure that the pointed end, uh, uh, pointed end doesn't hurt us, for that purpose, there is a cap involved in the other end. So after piercing through the cloth, we can enclose the end to this cap. Thirdly, to provide flexibility to this um, uh, to this pin, there is a uh, there is a circle and circle at the uh, bottom end, which provides flexibility when we op want to open and uh, close the pointed edge. So, as you can see, in this small product, there are three uh, very important <clears throat> aspects which actually provide um usability and protection and also uh, the ease of use so that is why it was granted patent so any small product or a small process also can be granted patent if it has the proper my use and inventiveness but there are some things which are not patentable first of all when established necessary laws. If anyone wants to uh, patent that uh, the sun rises in the east, he wants to patent that, that is not patentable. It is a well-established necessary law. The mere discovery of a scientific principle or the formulation of an abstract theory or a discovery of any living thing or non-living substance occurring in the minister is not patentable. So a group of scientists has discovered a new type of new kind of new species of frog in the jungles of Amazon. So it is a discovery. The frog was already existing in the jungle. The group of uh, scientists has just made it, made the information available to the public. 
So it is a discovery, not an invention. So it is not patented. Those inventions which affect public order, good morals of public health, they are also not patentable. Method of agriculture and horticulture are also not patentable. If they are allowed to be patented, then it will become very uh, difficult for the cultivators to cultivate and provide us with food. Aesthetic creations are also not patentable. They actually uh, comes under industrial designs. Uh, importantly, a mathematical or business model or a computer program or algorithms, these are not patentable, but these are patentable in US or other countries. So computer software which we use in daily life, that is not patentable in India, but it is patentable in US and other countries. A product or a process which is in effect is a traditional knowledge or an, an aggregation or duplication of known properties of traditionally known components or uh, other things. So these are not patentable. So in short, uh, we cannot patent a traditional knowledge directly. Uh, what are the rights of patentee? Our first right is the right to exploit the patent. So we can uh, put, uh, we can use our patent to exploit economic benefit, uh, to gain social recognition, to gain some social grant, uh, some government grant. So our right to exploit the patent. Second is the right to transfer the patent. That means we can transfer our uh, patent right to someone else if we wish to. Second, third is the power of registered country or a proprietor to deal with the patent through assignment license or dealing. So we can uh, deal with a company or provide a license to some uh, business person to make or use our patented product or process in return of some royalty amount or monetary benefit. A right to sue for infringement. If someone uh, else uses our product or process without uh, taking any prior permission and it is uh, actually harming our uh, <clears throat> interest, in that case, we can approach the court and sue for infringement. Right to surrender the patent. So the patentee can uh, surrender the patent that he doesn't require it anymore to the patent of his. So these are some of the rights of the patentee. So what are the precautions that we need to uh, have before applying for patent? First of all, the invention should never be disclosed to the public domain. I have already mentioned about the uh, instances where someone has informed the public through YouTube or social media. So those should not be done. If we disclose in that way, our novelty is lost. Our results of research and development should not be published in research journal prior to patent filing. First of all, we should go for the patent filing if it is a new product or patent, uh, product or uh, process. After that, we should go for the paper publication. If we uh, directly go for the paper publication or an article publication, it actually leads to prior art. That means uh, in the patent examiner, when they go for the patent examination, then they will consider the published uh, paper or the published article on your product as a prior art. That means the novelty for your product is already lost. Now we come to the process involved in getting a patent. First of all, we have to submit the patent application to the patent office. Once it is submitted to the patent office, the patent application is published in a patent journal. After a period of time, the application is examined by the uh, respective patent examiner from that particular field. And <clears throat> after the publication in the patent journal, if somebody has any opposition to the patent, or if, if someone thinks that it is already existing or it is similar to his work, then he can opposed to the grant of the patent to the patent office. In such cases, there will be hearing between the parties. And after, uh, if it is uh, observed that the opposition party is not, uh, uh, is not uh, correct, in that case, the patent will be granted and selling will be, of the patent will be, will be done. 
during the examination period a first examination report will be provided to the applicant and after that uh, there may be queries from the examiner about the patent and in every case <coughs> the applicant has to provide suitable answer to the queries uh, given by the examiner so if we are able to provide the uh, proper justification or proper answers to the queries made by the examiner then ultimately the grant of the patent will be given so when do we file a patent application first of all if we think that the invention fulfills the three criteria novelty inventive and inventiveness and industrial applicability then we can go for the patent filing in such cases first the specification drafting is done there are two types of patent application one is provisional and the uh, other is complete so uh, when our work is very new and the complete data is not ready but there is some business competition uh, that we need to file the patent as early as possible in such cases we can go for the provisional patent filing the date of first filing is known as the priority date so uh, usually between the companies when there is some competition, say between Samsung and Apple, uh, there is some competition to develop a particular uh, product for the uh, using mobile phone. So in cases, in such cases, whichever company is able to develop that particular product, they usually go for the provisional patent filing so that uh, uh, their priority date is booked. Uh, on after that, no company in the world can file the same patent in some other patent office or in the same patent office. So when there is some uh, business competition, when our uh, data is not completely ready, usually we go for the provisional application. But, but if in the cases where our work is completely ready and all the data is available, then we go for the complete application. And in cases where we, provide, we have submitted a provisional application, then within 12 months we have to provide the complete specification the basic difference between provisional application and complete uh, uh, complete spec specification is that the provisional application doesn't contain the claims so claims is the most important part of a patent uh, application which is all, uh, only available in the complete specification so uh, that is the uh, basic difference. Fees for physical filing is uh, usually 1750 rupees for demand draft, and e filing is 1600 rupees. Uh, I have mentioned earlier that the application is published in patent journal and it is published after 18 from the date of 18 months from the date of filing. Uh, anyone in any time at any time can oppose the patent application until the grant of the patent. After the publication, patent examiner examines the patent application. And if it is uh, okay in every aspect, in that case, the patent is granted for a period of 20 years from the priority date. Usually in India, uh, there is a huge uh, backlog of patent application in the patent office. So it takes some time to actually um, uh, get the patent granted so that is why uh, when we apply for the patent an application number is given and the priority date is reserved and therefore we can write uh, the application number and uh, after that we can in bracket we can write in bracket that the patent is pending so <clears throat> that way in india we actually uh, go for the commercial uh, commercialization of our patent after the filing of the application. So what are the infringement and remedies? So uh, the patentee has the exclusive right to prevent third parties from making and using or importing or selling the product. So, so any kind of violation of this rights by a third party is known as infringement of patent. And such kind of infringement may be delivered or delivered with some minor modification to hide or indirect infringement or accidental infringement, so innocent, innocent infringement. So there may be some different types of infringement. So in such cases, the patent can 
patent can file a suit for patent infringement. The remedies uh, available are injunction. The court can provide uh, temporary or permanent injunction or provide damage of the account, an account of profit to the patentee. Now we come to copyright. If we consider patent for the science and technology, for the field of science and technology, then we have to say that copyright is for the field of arts. So uh, copyrights are the exclusive right granted to the creators for their original artistic or literary works. And in India, it also includes computer software also. So computer software is not protected for patent, it is protected for copyright in India. Different kinds of work which are covered by the patent uh, copyright include uh, literary, dramatic, musical, or artist work, say novels, poems, lyrics, computer programs, choreographic work, uh, musical and graphical notation, subsurface work, paintings, photographs, sculptures, architectural designs, etc. Cinematograph film, sound recordings. So these are different kinds of work which are covered under the copyright so it is a right to copy distribute or adapt the work but it is not granted for mere idea i want to uh, take copyright for that, uh, that particular story then it is not possible i have to write it down i have to express it in a tangible form so that means I have to write it in the form of a story or in the form of a novel. Only after that, that copyright can be granted. So it is not granted for ideas. In case of literary work, the period of protection is lifetime of the author plus 60 years after his death. For cinematography film, records or photographs, their protection is for 60 years. And in case of broadcasting, the protection is for 25 years. When the date of protection is expressed, then the work enters into the public domain. Uh, here is an example of a lady, as you can see in the picture, he is, uh, JK, she is JK Rowling, the writer of famous Harry Potter series. So uh, through, uh, when she was writing the uh, book, her condition, economic condition was very uh, bad. So, after having the copyright over her books, uh, she was able to earn so much money that at the time her uh, wealth was second to the uh, Queen of Elizabeth. So uh, since her work was adapted into cinemas also, she could earn the royalty through copyright in those films also. So uh, through copyright, it, she was able to earn a huge amount of economic benefit. So the potential of copyright can be understood on the um, success of JK Rowling. So what are our rights under copyright? Actually, there are two kinds of rights. One is economic right and the other is moral right. Um, economic rights are right of reproduction. That means making a lot of copies of the whole world. Translation means translation rights, which means to translate the work from one language to another, the right of public performance right of broadcasting or communication to the public, rights of adaptation, right to an interest in resale of in works of art and manuscript, right to enforce protected rights. So these are economic rights. But in addition to economic rights, the authors also have moral rights. It is the right to claim authorship of the work and the right to object to certain modifications and other derogatory actions or to restrain or claim damage. So even if we transfer our uh, copyright to someone else, our uh, the moral rights always remains with the author. So if someone in, or somebody at a later stage uh, uh, makes certain modifications to his work and which actually, uh, which is actually, um, which actually debases the reputation of the original author. In such cases, the author can claim moral rights. So he can object to such modifications and prevent it by 
the use of our rights in copyright. So these are model rights. The filing of the copy, uh, copyright application is very easy. Uh, it actually uh, requires a form, which is known as uh, form uh, 14. It includes the statement of particulars and statement of other uh, uh, particulars. And for each kind of work, we need to have separate application and it has to be accompanied with the requisite fee. The fee is uh, 500 rupees for a uh, literary, dramatic, musical, or artistic work. Uh, the such kind of work which is capable of being used in relation to other goods. Then in such cases, the official fee is 2,000. Cinematographic film is uh, rupees 5,000 per work and sound recording rupees 2,000 per work. So these are the filing, of, uh, filing process of copyright application. But just like in uh, patent, copyright are also territorial in nature. That means our rights are uh, enclosed within the geographical boundary of our country. If we want to have um, copyright in other countries, then we can use uh, international treaties like Bern Convention for the Protection of Literary and Artistic Works, the Universal Copyright Convention, and the TRIPS Agreement they actually ensure the protection of copyrights of nationals of one country in other member countries. When the uh, term of protection in the uh, country of origin expires, in that case, the term of protection in all other jurisdictions also expire. Uh, copyright, copyright also provides uh, infringement and remedies. Uh, according to Copyright Act of 1957, civil, criminal, and administrative remedies for copyright infringement are available. Under civil remedies, a copyright owner can file suit for injunction, he can claim for damages, he can claim account of profit. So, criminal remedies include penalties ranging from the imprisonment of six months to three years and fine of rupees 50,000 to rupees 2 lakhs. Now let us discuss about trademark. So we have all seen these symbols in various products in our day-to-day -day life. These are known as trademarks. So trademark is a distinctive sign that actually identifies a certain good or a service as those produced or provided by a specific person or an enterprise. For example, when we see the um, half-eaten apple behind a laptop or a mobile, then we can instantly come to know that that particular laptop or the mobile is from the Apple company and it has very good quality. So the particular symbol actually uh, makes us understand the origin of that particular product and also the reputation and uh, product value associated with that particular product. Such kind of uh, sign can be a word or a symbol or combination of both, numerals, shape or Packaging of goods. As you can see, uh, that is 8 p.m. whiskey, and in that particular uh, liquor, the numerals uh, is used. And in the uh, Coca Cola bottle, the shape of the uh, good is also a trademark. And in the Apple uh, symbol, that is the only symbol without any kind of word. So these are some particular examples of trademark. <clears throat> Basically, trademark is a marketing tool and the basis for building a brand image or a reputation. It actually advertises the goods or services and guarantees its unsafe quality. For example, when we go to, uh, to buy say incense sticks in the market, then we look for the symbol of the Mongol leaf, say, because we know that, or the cycle of Garpati, because we know that both these brands have good quality and they provide very good quality of incense sticks. So the logo or the symbol actually guarantees its incense quality. So uh, the logo or the symbol uh, actually, um, actually, it actually, First of all, it connects to the product to its original producer. And secondly, it guarantees the unsense quality. 
The period of protection of trademark is generally for 10 years and it can be renewed indefinitely. That means once 10 year period is expired, then we can again renew it for another 10 years. Uh, in the below picture, there is the M symbol. Then when we see the M symbol, then we come to know that this product is from the McDonald's. So what are the benefits of trademark? First of all, it is used by traders or companies to distinguish their goods or services from their competitors. And when property advertised, it actually becomes a very effective instrument to attract the consumers and acquire their goodwill. So actually the consumer, a consumer actually associates some kind of uh, quality, price or prestige with the goods or the particular trademark. Uh, we are, uh, every, every one of us actually want to use uh, some product which actually provides the quality. So when we see the symbol, then actually we understand the quality associated with that particular product. And also it prevents other traders, company or firm from deceiving consumers into believing that goods or services actually produced by them were produced by the trademark holder. So deceptiveness is also preventive. Let us now discuss about geographical indication. <clears throat> we actually uh, get to know from the newspaper repeatedly about GI. So in newspapers, we uh, in nowadays we uh, often we say, uh, get to near read news about GI finding up some product or GI registration some of some other product. So geographical indication or short GI is an indication, which is maybe a lord, logo, or combination of a famous geographical area that is used in agricultural, natural, or manufactured goods. It's actually identified them from origin as originating from that particular geographical area. So when we see the logo, then we come to know that particular that particular agricultural or manufactured or natural good is coming from that particular origin. And it has some special qualities or characteristics which can be found only in that particular place. Uh, for example, when we see the logo of Muga Silk of Assam, which is given below, then we come to know that the product is um, from Muga, uh, the product is Muga Silk of Assam and it is from Assam. And it has a very beautiful quality and uh, color, golden color, which is not available in other seal. That kind of quality or characteristics are based upon the climatic and production characteristics, which is in, unique to the particular geographical area. So if we want to develop Muga silk in other states of the country, we will not get that particular golden color. It is because of our uh, human uh, the, uh, the climatic conditions of our state and also with the production characteristics of the person involved with that particular uh, field. So these characteristics are unique to that, unique to our state. That is why uh, that particular product is famous. So GS when associated with products, they actually create value and attract premium from the customers because it is a symbol of purity. Uh, below, we have given the example of Lipton tea. So Lipton tea, uh, Lipton Darjeeling tea. So in that particular uh, tea packet, you can see the logo uh, uh, at the bottom of the packet. So when we see that particular logo, we instantly come to know that that particular packet contains only Darjeeling tea. It doesn't contain any other uh, mixer of tea say Assam tea or Nilgiri tea. So the quality is ensured. So the customer is ready to pay a premium price for the particular product because he, he has been given the guarantee that the particular product which will provide him the uh, beautiful characteristics of Brazilian tea. Similar is the case with Bhujia, Bikani Bhujia, Bikaji Bhujia also. In that uh, Bhujia, which we usually use in our day-to-day -day life. 
we can have the we can see the geographical indication logo below so that means that particular vizier is prepared in the bikane uh, area of rajasthan and it has the uh, particular taste of bikaji vizier which is not found in any other kind of vizier so that way it creates value and attract premium from the customers the important aspect is that it is the only um, it is the only ipr where the rights belong to the community not to an individual that means <clears throat> uh, a person or a group of person cannot uh, register a gi against his name it can be uh, registered only by a organization which represents the interest of the producer community i have shown the uh, registered gi logo of um, nuga silk of assam below it was registered by patent information center stec in 2006 it is the first uh, gi of northeast india so there are three kinds of products which can be, which can be provided protected from uh, gi first of all it is natural goods uh, natural goods include um, that may be say example for example mysore sandal oil or dholpur red stone uh, if we take the example of dholpur red stone the particular red color it arises necessarily it is not uh, prepared in in industry or in any kind of other setup so it is a necessarily available uh, famous product agricultural product it includes orthodox tea of assam which is already registered or nagasili uh, manufactured products include kolapuri chappal or muga silk of assam so these are some examples of nestle agriculture or manufactured goods in which gi registration has already been done so what is the benefit of gi registration <clears throat> first of all it provides the legal protection to the gi tech products so any uh, very uh, some other businessmen they cannot uh, actually uh, uh, they cannot actually misappropriate the benefits of the goodwill and the reputation associated with such gis by misleading the consumers so uh, say so some silk produced in bihar they cannot uh, sell it as muga silk of assam because uh, the muga silk of assam is already a registered gi second it is a symbol of purity and authenticity and quality it standardizes the quality parameters and ensure high value and high quality goods in the uh, gi application uh, the applicant has to give the um, description about the product and he has to provide the parameters for which uh, the quality and the um, purity of the product will be ensured so when a person uses the uh, gi logo after the registration he has to ensure that those quality parameters are maintained so gi can create value and attract premium from the customers and as a result since it is a uh, community right it can bring economic prosperity to the producers of the gi tech products and the export market for the gi tech products is also very huge so the producer community can export their product to the uh, foreign market and uh, get benefit get uh, they can earn a lot of uh, monetary benefit and as i, I have already mentioned that the rights are belong to the community not to an individual and when it is uh, registered in uh, other uh, countries it can seek legal protection under other world trade organization member countries and thus the export is also boosted now uh, we come to the industrial design part <clears throat> industrial design actually refers to the external features of shape configuration pattern ornamentation or composition of fine lines or color applied to any article whether it is in 2d or in 3d form 
so it is basically the aesthetic aspect of a uh, article how it looks so the look is uh, protected through industrial design it actually adds to the commercial value of a product and it increases its marketability so uh, for example in the um, mobile phones we come to know different designs every in every model after one year so this design improvements actually uh, attracts more customers and accordingly they are uh, uh, accordingly the commercial value of the product is uh, increase similar is the case with jewelry designs also here i have given a registered uh, design registration of a waste segregation bin so in normal bins it is actually a very monotonous color or uh, some other uh, single colored uh, beans are available but in this case he has provided some uh, different color waste products and also the uh, design of the product is also good so he his design of waste segregation bin has been very star so when industrial design is protected it ensures a fair return of the investment because we need to invest a lot of time and effort to develop the design to uh, to prepare the composition of color to prepare the pattern to prepare the uh, shape so when it is when the design is registered when it is protected uh, no one else can uh, copy it and as a result <clears throat> the time and effort invested in the product it leads to a fair return through commercial value of the product the protection period is usually for 10 years first of all it is given for 10 years which is which can be later extended to another five years and the benefits of design registration first of all it adds to the commercial value of a product and when it is protected the fair return on the investment is ensured and thirdly and importantly it promotes fair competition and honest trade practices when a company says that a uh, company uh, comes to know that some other company is providing very beautiful uh, aesthetic products in the market it is also compelled to de uh, develop such uh, industrial designs to satisfy the uh, consumer needs so it encourages the creativity in the industrial and manufacturing sectors and it contributes to the expansion of commercial activities and the export of national product. <clears throat> now, at the last part, I am going to discuss about semiconductor integrated circuit layout design. So the electronic products, they actually, uh, we know that uh, there are many uh, circuit boards and semiconductors are uh, installed in them. Uh, but in India, uh, such uh, integrated circuits, they cannot be patented under the Patent Act. Therefore, a special type of uh, intellectual property act has been designed to protect them, which is known as Semiconductor Integrated Circuit Layout Design. And it comes under Semiconductor Integrated Circuits Layout Design Act 2000. Usually, the topography of an integrated circuit to develop that, a huge uh, investment and effort is required. That is why uh, it is very important that uh, it is protected so that others cannot copy it and <clears throat> get the benefit. So to protect the um, integrated circuits, which has very uh, huge commercial value, semiconductor integrated circuit layer designs are registered. When it is registered, it gives the exclusive right to the creator of the layout design for 10 years. Then the uh, owner can commercially exploit the creation and prevent others from reproducing, importing, or selling the um, IC layout without his consent. So, in case of any infringement, reliefs are available under the Act. That is why it is important that whatever uh, semiconductor indicator circuits are designed, it is uh, registered through this act. 
and the basic criteria for registration is original distinctive indistinguishable that means the um, ic circuit has to be original distinctive and distinguishable and the registration fee is rupees 5000 per word so uh, these are basically the uh, different types of intellectual property rights in, uh, i have not discussed about plan variety protection and farmers rights uh, considering the time limit i will later discuss it if you uh, get another chance to uh, discuss about it uh, now i would like to uh, shortly discuss about how ip can act as a tool for economic development uh, usually what happens that patents can be uh, used for economic progress by way of technology transfer and investment promotion of research and development initiation of development of new technology and commercial activities and licensing and assignment we can also revenue generate to a huge amount many uh, industries and uh, universities they actually uh, earn a lot of revenue through technology transfer and investment <clears throat> Trademark also similarly can uh, influence the economic development by very uh, by different ways. Since it provides a guarantee of the quality and advertises the product, it can increase the customer loyalty. And the customer when the customer base is increased, then ultimately the very uh, commercial um, benefit of the company is also increased. Uh, one can generate a revenue also for licensing and assignment of the trademark also. And the proprietor of a design also gets legal protection for the use of the design for commercial purposes. He can also earn economic benefit for licensing. And similar is the case with uh, copyright and geographical indications also. I have already discussed how geographical indication can um, actually benefit the entire community. Importance of economic uh, intellectual property in business. Uh, in our knowledge-based economy, uh, today the IP assets are emerging as very key business assets for the organizations and industries. Uh, so uh, when a, uh, actually when a company takes over another company, uh, the company which is taken, being taken over, it's all kind of assets, including its industrial setup, its IP assets, its patents, copyrights, available trademarks, all these kinds are taken into account. So sometimes what happens is that the, uh, the value of the uh, patent and uh, copyright and other intellectual property rights held by the company is more than the industrial setup of the company. So that is why intellectual property is not treated as a very core component of the business strategy of a company. So whatever a business strategy is developed, IP strategy is also aligned with the business strategy. And companies carry out IP audit to identify the IP assets and whatever problem available in them and whatever need to protection. So regularly they carry out IP audits. So uh, in this discussion, we have come to know that uh, there are uh, total seven forms of IPR, uh, out of which we have discussed today six forms. So patent protects inventions, copyright protects expression of ideas, literary, artistic, musical work, etc. Industrial design, they actually protect, um, protects the external appearance of a product. Trademark protects identification symbols, words or letter, which <coughs> identify the products with its originating company. Semiconductor integrated circuit layout design registration, it is for the layout of integrated circuits. GI, geographical indication, it protects reputed natural, agricultural, or manufactured product from a specific geographical area. So every kind of IPR protects a different type of uh, product or a uh, different area. Uh, let us discuss it with a simple example. In this bottle, there are total three, four types of IPR involved. <laughs> when we see the lid of the uh, bottle, it has a novel mechanism of opening and closing the lid of the bottle. When we use 
the normal waters the problem was that uh, if we open the lid and try to have uh, so have a drink then um, the lid will uh, actually uh, uh, come to its original position as a result when we when we are drinking from the bottle then uh, it is um, it creates some problem so the lid of the bottle is not developed in such a way when it is open it remains at the same position it does not uh, um, automatically come back to the original position so that particular opening and uh, closing mechanism of the lid of the bottle it is protected from a different kind of uh, ipr and it is known as patent so the novel mechanism of opening and closing that is protected to patent and the look of the bottle that is very beautiful very beautiful look uh, you can see the rings you can see the color of uh, all the both the color of the lid and the rings below it is of the same color so pink color this pink color beautiful uh, aesthetic look of the bottle it is protected through industrial design the logo of the uh, bottle uh, that is flare company and the name of the bottle grip well water bottle so these are protected through a kind of ipr which is trademark so in this particular uh, simple example we can three we can see that there are three types of uh, IPR involved patent, trademark, and industrial design. This is the World Intellectual Property Organization (WIPO). It is an organization under United Nations. This is the famous blue building of WIPO. Uh, World Intellectual Property Organization actually looks after the entire field of intellectual property rights in the world. This is the Intellectual Property India office. Uh, it is looked after by the Office of the Controller General of Patents, Designs and Trademark. It is located in Mumbai and it is under the Department for Promotion of Industry and Industrial Trade, Ministry of Commerce and Industry, Government of India. Uh, I'm very happy to inform you that uh, this uh, Office of the Controller General of Patents and Designs, CGBDTM, uh, and Ministry of Commerce and Industry, uh, <clears throat> last year uh, awarded our patent information center with the best in, best patent information award uh, patent information center award under um, national innovation uh, national intellectual property rights award 2020 so uh, i'm very happy to inform you that uh, cgptm awarded us with the best patent information center last year so these are basically the uh, different kinds of uh, different aspects of uh, patent uh, ipr and <clears throat> if you want to have any other uh, information and if you have uh, would like to avail the services of patent information center we provide all kinds of support to the innovators uh, in all fields uh, in patent copyright trademark and all the other fields so you can contact us our office in uh, guwahati abc uh, the email is also available there you can contact us through the email and uh, we provide uh, some services to the uh, public without uh, any kind of charges and any kind of guidance and any other suggestions you can write to us in the email so uh, thank you very much for giving me this opportunity to interact with you all I hope you have understood the different aspects of intellectual property rights. If there is any uh, query or any doubt, you can uh, raise your question in the comment box and I will try to uh, elaborate the concept. Thank you. Uh, thank you, sir, for your presentation. We do have some questions in the comment box. So the first question uh, says that, is there any possibility that an artist is eligible for resale of its right protection. If a work of art is rented, borrowed, exchanged, or donated, can an artist get the resale royalties? That's the first question we have. Uh, in some cases of some art, uh, if it is copyright protected, one can uh, one can claim some resale royalties, but uh, 
in every piece of work, uh, uh, the royalty cannot be claimed. First of all, it has to be uh, copyright protected. I have uh, already mentioned it that uh, in our uh, work that some in some cases one can uh, get some uh, right protection for the resale work. So yes, uh, in some cases uh, uh, it is if it is resale, then the resale royalties can be entered. But for uh, rent, borrowed, or exchange, that cannot be uh, uh, cannot be uh, obtained. Only for the resale purposes, when it is sold again, then in that cases the um, original author can claim some resale protection or royalty. The second question we have is that uh, how should one protect IPRs in a joint project? Uh, <clears throat> let me uh, discuss uh let me elaborate this with a uh, simple example uh say um, say in a um university uh a research and development project is going on and out of that research and development uh project join project uh join project join uh i hope it is uh, meant that a group of person is uh, involved so say a group of uh, people are involved in that particular project and ultimately a product or a process is uh, developed which is uh, patentable. So in cases, uh, in such cases, um, if the uh, IP uh, policy of the university allows, then the inventors themselves can be the applicant. But uh, if the IP uh, policy of the university doesn't allow uh, that, in such cases, um, the university will be the applicant, and the um, <clears throat> the and the inventors will be uh, uh, will be only uh, they will be only termed as inventors. They will not be both in the applicant and um, inventor. But if the uh, university provides NOC in such cases, uh, the inventors themselves can become the applicant. And in many, uh, many, uh, in many institutions, say in IIT Delhi and uh, such other higher education institute, say ICR, they have a particular IP policy uh, in their institutions, which provides, uh, uh, which provides a royalty benefit to the inventors. They have developed their own formula. How uh, how much percentage of royalty benefit will be go, uh, will be uh, provided to the inventor and how much will be obtained by the university or the institution so uh, in normal cases uh, what we are getting in the uh, our patent information center usually they approach us uh, through the ipr sales of the universities or uh, directly uh, if the uh, uh, joint project is uh, between a group of people uh, all of them are usually uh, named as inventors and the organization or the institution is labeled as the applicant and after the um, after the grant of the uh, patent uh, whatever ip policy the university or the uh, institution is having accordingly the royalty benefit is provided to the inventors i hope uh, it has uh, uh, it has uh, have solved your uh, query the next question that we have is that uh, does the free riders cause hindrance in intellectual property? Uh, actually, the basic uh, basic uh, uh, aim of intellectual property rights is to provide uh, to prevent the free riders. When I was discussing about uh, intellectual property, the need of protection in IP, need of protection of IP in society, I have mentioned that if uh, free uh, riding is allowed then no new knowledge will be created and uh, people will not be motivated to create new knowledge and as a result uh, our progress of the society will be uh, hampered so uh, free riders definitely cause hindrance in intellectual property but uh, it depends on the uh, that is why it is important that we actually register our intellectual property as under intellectual uh, in, uh, we actually register our intellectual property rights so when we register our intellectual property, we can uh, take action against our uh, free riders. I would like to give an example. Uh, when I was uh, studying MSc in my university, uh, one some uh, a person used to visit our uh, hostels. He would uh, bring some books 
actually those books uh, cost very high so he used to uh, xerox them and bind it and sell it to the hostel uh, hostel uh, students at a very uh, cheap, cheap rate so if the original book is 1000 rupees he was providing it in 100 rupees uh, 100 rupees so actually uh, he was free writing on the effort of the author and the publishing company so later uh, the um, since the companies had the copyright later they filed a case against him in the police station and he was arrested later and all his uh, setup of uh, xeroxing and all those things were uh, later seized by the police so uh, it depends on the uh, ip holder to take uh, take action against the free riders uh, similarly in uh, many cases uh, so in some cases they may not uh, uh, take action say an example we uh, used to see that adidas companies uh, that company logo is since it is uh, the since it is uh, instead of adidas it is called abidas so they so uh, causing confusion in the mind of the um, consumers but it is not uh, it is not allowed in law but uh, the company may not take action against uh, such uh, people because it is not uh, harming their business to a great extent the next question that we have is uh, how serious is the problem of trade secret misappropriation in india uh, actually uh, the trade secret uh, trade secret uh, is uh, a secret which is maintained to actually uh, give a boost to the uh, business purposes for example, uh, we all drink Coca-Cola, but we do not know what is the composition of Coca-Cola. So it is a trade secret. It is the uh, longest kept uh, trade secret in the history of IPR. So <clears throat> it's trade secrets it may be maintained when uh, uh, there is some economic or business benefit out of it. Uh, a simple example is the uh, Maggi Masala. We do not, we all have the, uh, we all know what is the composition of the Maggi masala, but we do not know the. Uh, we all know the ingredients of the uh, Maggi uh, masala, but we do not know the proportion. So as a result, the taste, uh, that particular taste, uh, that cannot be. Uh, uh, it is not possible to uh, copy. Is, it is. It has not been copied by other companies. So in market there are many many noodles, but no one has been able to give the same taste as Maggi company. So. Uh, uh so it is very important on part of the uh, company to uh, well protect their trade secret but uh, what happens that when trade secret is maintained uh, whatever people uh, associated with the protection of the trade secret the company makes an uh, agreement with them that if you leak the trade secret there will be legal and economic consequences Sometimes what happens is that uh, some persons knowingly on uh, such uh, persons who have already uh, done some agreement with the company, those responsible persons sometimes may uh, leak or uh, release the, uh, the trade secret to the others. And if the company actually comes to know about the uh, leakage of the trade secret, they can take action against such persons. But in India, the trade secret uh, concept is uh, hasn't been uh, well. I I I I will say that it is has not been well used yet. Uh, just like uh, for example, if you give the example again of Coca-Cola company, they have been using thousands of plugs of pros every year from around the world. But uh, <clears throat> our companies they have not uh, using the trade secret in business properly. So. Uh, the uh, this actual uh, problem of trade secret misappropriation in India is not may uh, not very serious at this point of time because our trade secret uses is very much less. But there are some uh, instances where uh, other uh, research and development data and other things like um, some uh, research and development products and other things. Those are being leaked by uh, the company uh, or the industrial setup personnel to others. And in most of the cases, they have been caught and accordingly, uh, they have been punished. So the best way to protect our trade secret is to 
have an agreement whoever person knows about the uh, particular product and uh, as a result they will be compelled to uh, uh, compelled to, uh, to maintain the secret and if they leak the secret in such cases there will be legal and economic consequences uh, we have probably the last question uh, like uh, if you write an original story what type of intellectual property gives you the right to decide who can make and sell copies of your work so uh, if you write an original story uh, then uh, actually stories novels and these things uh, they actually come under literary work and these are protected for copyright and uh, actually uh, uh, so the publishing uh, company will decide uh, will have the copyright and accordingly they will decide how much uh, copies of your work will be uh, printed and how to, what is the rate of uh, uh, royalty that will be provided to you so uh, actually copyright provides the protection to uh, literary work Uh, thank you, sir. I think uh, we have almost come to the end of this session. Uh, I, on behalf of the organizing committee, would like to express there is my... One more, uh, there is one, one more question from Ujjal Das. Uploading Bollywood songs, videos in Facebook, mm -hmm. Instagram, etc. Uh, doesn't come under the purview of violation. It, it does come under uh, purview of IPR law. It is, uh, I have already mentioned the cinematographic film, music, teaser, uh, protected through copyright. Uh, copyright. So uh, if someone is uh, uploading, uh, actually, uh, in, in YouTube, in most of the cases in YouTube, we get to see that um, part of that uh, a new song is released. Immediately, some other channel, they copy the song and paste it in the channel, and in uh, they earn the benefit, uh, economic benefit from that also. So if someone is uh, uploading a videos uh, without uh, the permission of the actual copyright owner, it is uh, it is a violation of IPR law. So the company, uh, the other uh, uh, institution which is having the uh, copyright protection, they can take action against this person. So nowadays you can uh, see that uh, what happens that uh, uh, sometimes in news uh, we we get to see some Twitter tweet tweets where some video is attached, and uh, once we try to click the video. Uh, then we get to see one line that that the video is removed as per the request of the copyright owner. So in many cases, uh, <clears throat> uh, the actual copyright owner takes action against us, uh, IPR violation. Okay, thank you, sir. I think we don't have any more questions. Uh, so one we more have... question, what are the, uh, there's one more question, what are the scope of IPR in India? Scope of IPR means, uh, uh, scope of IPR um, uh, in I don't I have not understood what is the uh, actual uh, field uh, that you are asking about the scope. If you are uh, asking that uh, what is the scope of employment in IPR, that you can say that uh, the scope is increasing day by day because uh, we have now a lot of patent agents, a, a lot of uh, uh, patent attorney and other patent examiners, so the uh, scope is huge. And if you're asking about the uh, entire IPI field, then you can see that it is growing day by day uh, with the uh, University Grants Commission or MHRD, they are both, uh, both of them, or the Ministry of Commerce, all of everyone is taking care of this field and so that it grows uh, in every part of the country. So the scope of API in terms of field and in terms of employability, it is very huge. So thank you, that is the end of the questions. Thank you, sir, uh, for your presentation. I, on behalf of the organizing committee, would like to express my heartfelt gratitude to you for giving us your valuable time and for enlightening us about the different aspects of IPR, about the different components and about the real life examples related to the different components of IPR. I would also like to express my heartfelt gratitude to our principal, sir, Dr. Sarbesachi Mohanto, sir, for his continuous support and guidance in organizing this workshop. I would also like to express my heartfelt gratitude to IQAC coordinator, Dr. Surjit Saikya sir, for initiating this workshop. I would also like to express my heartfelt gratitude to DPIIT 
IPR Chair Tejpur University and IPEG, the City Law School, City University of London for collaborating with us. And last but not the least, I would like to express my heartfelt gratitude to the faculty members and participants for staying connected with us throughout the session. And uh, this is for the announcement that we have the innovative idea competition, which is uh, scheduled at 5 p.m. today. And I would request our participants to reconnect with us and support the students who are participating in the competition. And uh, I hope that we'll be meeting everyone at 5.30 p.m. today again for the next session. Thank you.